Hello everyone, my name is the Deuteron Doctor, and today we are going to be talking about how to play the .52 gal in Splatoon 3. The first thing that I could say you should be looking out for is you kill very fast, so you're only going to need two hits to actually get a pick. You have Splash Wall and Killer Whale 5.1. You're going to be going around slaying as fast as possible while trying to keep yourself alive to do better pushes. In order to do that, the Killer Whale 5.1 is good because it gets people off your tail. You can use it when you're getting chased down. You can be running away while you are using it. That way you can get people off your butt, like I said before. You can use the splash wall to protect in front of you, just in case you're on a map, just like Mahi Mahi Resort. Like if you're on those middle platforms, you can throw a splash wall down at the end of one to protect yourself from oncoming bullets. You're basically a slayer and a painter simultaneously, but mostly a slayer. You are there to absolutely destroy the enemy team, get them knocked down as fast as possible so other people can rush in and help you. Almost every single map in the game is pretty good for this weapon, so I I wouldn't say there's a best map for it. They're all pretty good, except for maybe Scorch Gorge and Flounder Heights, which isn't even in the game yet. The best gear I'd say for this weapon is going to be Last Ditch Effort at top. Then it's going to be Run Speed Up and Swim Speed Up. Then it's going to be Ink Recovery Up, because it's pretty ink efficient already. You just need ink recovery up. Also, special saber is going to be important because of that splash wall taking a lot of ink out of your tank. The next thing and probably last thing that I would say would help you out is going to be thermal ink. Because if you're a slayer, you're going to have to keep track of your opponents. And what better way to do that than if you can track your opponents to begin with. Other than that, don't play around corners. It's a bad idea. Corners are pretty much your downfall because if an arrow spray walks by corner they have super large spread so they're going to be painting a lot of the wall or while they're walking and if you're on that corner you're trying to pop around that corner and kill them they're going to demolish you before you even get a chance to shoot one bullet the weapon you are strongest against as a 0.52 gal player is going to probably be splatlings that are close range like the mini and the heavy because they have the firepower to outshoot you for sure but they do not have the range. If you abuse that, especially if you use the ink wall, they can't do anything against you. Same with Blob Lobber. Blob Lobber is absolutely useless if you have an ink wall in front of it. The weapons that .52 gal is weak against, I would probably say are going to be the longer range weapons like Hydra Splatling or E-Leader especially. They hit just as hard as the .52 but have way more range while doing it. Another weapon that I would try to avoid is going to be the Jet Squelcher. That thing is just absolutely, it just tears people to shreds with ease. And two more weapons that I would say you want to avoid, but these ones are pretty rare and you're not going to see them a lot in battles, is going to be the L3, Nozzle Nose, and the Squeezer. Very, very rarely are you going to see them, but in the right hands, you can practically become useless if they're good with that weapon. And a team comp, obviously, it's an assault. You're going to want a support. You're going to want a backline. And with the .52, you don't even really need an additional support like you would with Inkbrush, for example. With Inkbrush, obviously, you need an extra support because Inkbrush doesn't have the range to be able to support a team all by itself. You need at least one more support, whether that be another ink brush or a shooter or what have you. But .52, it covers all that ground and it's pretty decent at painting, so you don't really need another front line. So you could spend that on somebody who paints the base. So you have front line, a uh, support, back line, and a painter. Like the reflux would be perfect in a team comp with the .52. In Rainmaker, probably rush for the Rainmaker at the start of the match as a .52 gal player. Obviously have your team with you, you know, coordinate but generally, you're going to want to be the first person there. Clan Blitz, I'd say let supports help you out more because supports are better at Clan Blitz unless you're, again, Ink Brush or Octo Brush. Tower Control is also a pretty support heavy and backline heavy ranked mode. So you don't want to be on the tower for Tower Control. You really don't. You want to be going around the tower, killing as many people as physically possible so that the supports and the backlines can stay on the tower and keep the thing moving. 
we're talking about splat zones. Your job is, yes, to cover a lot of the zone, but again, you have supports for that. That's the funny thing about assault weapons. They are very useful for turf war and rainmaker. Yeah, they're useful for tower control, splat zones, and clan blitz, but those are very support heavy rank modes. You can't really do much without a team that coordinates well in those modes. So rainmaker, I'd say, is probably the one where it shines the best. If we're talking about how good the .52 is compared to other shooters like the Aerospray, the Enzap, and whatnot, right now the .52 is probably one of the best shooters in the game, other than Jet Squelcher or Splatter Shot. Just the classic Splatter Shot is terribly overpowered right now. But anyways, I'm the Dudenon Doctor, and I will see you later. Bye.